Good morning. morning. Shall we stand and sing together hymn number 61, Sleepers Wake. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading.
Good morning. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did these great things in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statues and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Let us read together Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, from which and what our Father have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, 
will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. So we stand together and sing hymn 68, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flecks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up, trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Interesting weekend, huh? I was um, having a conversation online, a text conversation with a friend of mine last night, just last evening, and he asked me what I was going to be preaching on and I said the gospel he said well you've got to say something about this election I said the gospel says everything I need to say I didn't I haven't preached any political sermons I don't think from this pulpit up to this point, and I don't plan on starting now. <laughs> so uh, let's go with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. 
This lesson that we heard today is um, one of four consecutive parables that we hear over, the, over these weeks. There's one more next week that begin with the words, Jesus saying the words, the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like this. Uh, which, if you've been here, and most of you here and online have, have uh, heard me preach in the past few weeks, uh, can be interpreted as, get ready. The kingdom of God is like this. Get ready, because your idea of what the kingdom of God is like is nowhere near what the kingdom of God is like. It's completely different than what you expect. At first glance, we look at this lesson and, and we might hear this, this gospel, this parable of the ten maidens, the five wise maidens and the five morons, which is what it's actually interpret or the, the word is there, not foolish, but moronic. Um, we might hear that as good girls win and bad girls lose. <laughs> Those who don't do the right thing, they don't do it in the right way, well, they're just simply out of luck. They'll be locked out, left out in the darkness with no hope of entering into the banquet. Now think about that. That's, that's the way that's been preached and, and taught over the years. No hope. There's some of us who are going to have no hope. We're just going to be out of luck because we didn't do it right. We didn't pray right. We didn't live our lives properly. If you don't follow the rules, you're not going to get into the kingdom of God. What? What? If we take that message away from this parable that I'm thinking there's a whole lot of us who aren't going to be in the kingdom of God. Including me. Left out in the darkness with no hope. Where there's gnashing of teeth and wailing and all that junk. That doesn't sound, that certainly can't be the message of this parable. Because it doesn't jive with my understanding of God. A God of eternal hope. <laughs> of eternal, unbounded love and forgiveness. Extraordinary kindness. That's not the God I worship. So maybe we're misunderstanding what this parable is saying. Let's take another look at it. You know, every year in November, we're, we're assigned these parables right just before Advent. It's, it's these uh, three or four parables right before the Advent season, this time of expectation. Remember, I'm going to use that word again, expect. Time of expectation is Advent. We have these parables that are, um, shall we say, apocalyptic in nature what it's going to be like at the end times, what we should expect. And, and what we usually end up doing is we, we expect the end times to be something like a courtroom scene where you're going to be judged by God, right? That's what we think. I mean, you're going to have the sheep and the goats. There are going to be those that are in, those that are out. There's got to be some finality, some judgment. Armageddon! A complete catastrophe. The end of life as we know it. Something we should be afraid of. This big, huge threat that will be our fate for eternity. Ooh. That's what we think of when we think of the end times. We expect this. Why? 
because that's what we have been taught to expect, even by the church. But what we get here in this parable is something completely different. Judgment Day is a big party. <laughs> it's a wedding feast, no less. And we get a banquet. God appears in this story not as a judge. God appears in this story as the bridegroom. And God arrives when? At midnight, in the middle of the night, when it's total darkness, when he's least expected, when some of those who are waiting for God, for the bridegroom's appearance, when some of those who are waiting are least prepared. As a matter of fact, some of them who were waiting aren't even in attendance. <laughs> they aren't even present. All right, first let's look at lightness and darkness. Light, they're often used symbolically in Scripture, lightness and darkness, to describe a state of being. You see, darkness describes unknowing, being in the dark, unconscious, uh, not having any sense of where you are, clueless, we say. So we call somebody who's clueless that they're in the dark, right? We just have no idea, no way of knowing because we can't see. For some reason, we can't see. Lightness, on the other hand, is why we actually can't see light itself. Light illumines. Light shows us what's in front of us. We can, we, it helps us see things, often things that we didn't, we didn't ever have any idea existed. It gives us a sense of awareness we, we call it enlightenment, right? We are enlightened. In the Gospels, to see the light means that we have gained a sense of consciousness, that we have gained the ability to see. And the truth of the matter is this. None of us, not me, not you, I, I don't know anyone who lives in one place or the other their entire lives, or who moves from one place to the other and stays there. We have times that we spend in light, and then we have times that we spend in darkness. We all have dark nights, dark nights of the soul, times of suffering, of unknowing, when we just don't understand what's happening doesn't make sense to us. It's a place, darkness is a place that all of us experience at one time or another. And I think what this lesson is trying to say, what Jesus is trying to say here, the question Jesus is trying to ask us is, are you ready for that? Are you ready to continue your life's journey through that darkness, through that dark time? Are you prepared for that trip? Do you have your lamps ready? Because it's coming. As he said, you don't know when. You don't know how, but it's coming. And I, it's something that often bothered me about this parable and and uh, I want to bring it up here is these five wise uh, maidens, virgins, whatever the, you call them, I've always thought of them as holier than thou. Oh, I'm prepared. I got my lamps ready. And when these poor, foolish, moronic young ladies didn't have theirs ready, they said, can we, will you share some of yours? And, and the, bride's, the bride may say, no, go find your own. Going, why not? Why not share? Why, don't, why aren't you going to share your oil? Well, I don't think it's because they're being selfish. 
I don't think it's because they're mean, mean girls. <laughs> I think it's because it's impossible for them to share. It's impossible for them to share the light. They can't possibly do that. You know, staying with this, this New Testament concept of light as a symbol, you can't just give somebody enlightenment. You can't just give somebody knowledge. You can't uh, give them awareness or, or consciousness. It's impossible. You must find it for yourself. As Richard Rohr says, there is no secondhand religion. It's all firsthand experience. You have to experience it for yourself. And each of us must take this journey. And we tend to, like I said before, we tend to think of judgment as being sheep or goats, as being in or out or at the party or not at the party, in the kingdom or out of it. We, we tend to think of it as meeting a set of moral requirements. Well, of course you need to share your oil. Of course you need to do this or that or the other thing. That's the neighborly thing to do. That's the Christian thing to do. Meet these moral requirements. Meet these rules and obey them or else. That's what we think of as judgment. But if you look at this story today, there's no moral requirements written here. Jesus doesn't tell the story with saying, well, you got to do this and you got to do that or you're out. The only thing he requires here is enlightenment, <laughs> awareness, consciousness, having an inner desire for these things. That's what's required in the Christian journey or in the spiritual journey. Not that we meet a set of moral requirements or rules, but that we are aware and conscious and move forward. Finally, at the end of this lesson, we hear the bridegroom say to those outside the door, truly I tell you, I do not know you. <laughs> Whoa. Just because I didn't have my lamp trimmed, my wick trimmed, <laughs> my lamp full of oil at the time you came in the middle of the night, by the way, you were late. Just because I wasn't ready, you act like you don't even know me? Well, I, truly, I, I hope that you've heard this before, and I hope I'm not breaking some code, written code about preachers here, but you do know the meaning, biblical meaning of the word to know, right? <laughs> It's used over and over and over again. To, so, to know someone biblically is, to, is much more than just a physical, uh, mental, rational, heady knowing someone. It's much more than knowing someone up here. It's knowing someone with your entire body. Body, mind, and spirit. The whole shebang. When Genesis in Genesis, we hear uh, at, at the story of creation, Adam knew his wife Eve. Well, I think the meaning of that becomes pretty clear, right? When in the Gospel of Luke, the angel Gabriel comes to the Virgin Mary and says, you will have a child. She says, how can this be? I don't have a husband. In some, in some translations, it's, I know no man. The meaning's pretty clear of what no means in the Bible. To know someone biblically is to have carnal knowledge of that person. It's, it's the same word we get incarnation from, right? To become one. It's more than just to be mentally aware. It's to be involved with that person, body, mind, heart, and soul. And if you're catching my drift, that happens in the middle of the night. 
right? In our story, the bridegroom arrives not in the light, but in the middle of the night. It's up to us to be prepared, to be prepared to know him incarnationally, completely, in body, mind, and spirit. Our God comes to us when we least expect it. When we got our guard down, when we're not prepared. In the middle of the night. The question is, how do we prepare? Are we prepared to know God completely? To accept God as a bridegroom? Jesus says, don't be caught unawares. Don't remain unconscious. Keep your lamps full. Keep your wicks trimmed. (laughs) Be prepared. Stay awake, he says. Stay awake, therefore. For you know neither the hour nor the day. Amen. Let us, God's people, pray. O God, almighty and all-knowing, deliver us from the foolishness of wasting our lives, pursuing vain, empty, and temporary pleasures. Keep us earnest and sincere in living out the faith we claim, encouraging one another to remember and to trust our coming resurrection and unending life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O God, almighty and all-knowing, make haste to help us in these days of distressing political turmoil, distrust in one another, and increasing violence everywhere. Send your Holy Spirit to breathe through us that we may find courage and strong, yet calm, rational, and peace-filled. Give us the words to speak to and inspire all who hold power on our planet, in our nation, and in our hometowns to turn the weapons of today into tools of justice, righteousness, harmony, and stability. Pray for our government leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O oh God, almighty and all-knowing, comfort all who suffer serious physical or emotional pain or desperate life circumstance and instill hope and stamina in those provide support. Pray for those who suffer and are in need. Pray also for those who reach out in support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, almighty and all-knowing, as our hearts weep, with those who mourn. Hold us all fast in your all-encompassing presence. Help us to find and extend cons consolation in your faithful assurance of life everlasting, now granted to all who live again in your steadfast love. Pray for those who have died and for those who mourn their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, almighty and all-knowing, grant our spiritual leaders the purity of heart, the wisdom of Christ, and the fidelity of faith to guide our soul journey toward your eternal kingdom. Pray for all ministers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, almighty and all-knowing, we pause in this moment to offer you our other heartfelt thanksgivings, intercessions, petitions, and memorials aloud or silently. For whom else shall we pray? Loving God, we ask blessings on all those who have served their country in the armed forces. We ask for healing for the veterans who have been wounded in body and soul in conflicts around the globe. We pray especially for the young men and women in the thousands who are coming home with injured bodies and traumatized spirits. Bring solace to them, O oh Lord. May we pray for them when they cannot pray. We also ask for an end to wars and the dawning of a new era of peace as a way to honor all the veterans of past wars. Have mercy on all our veterans. Bring peace to their hearts and peace to the re regions they fought in. Bless all the soldiers who served in non-combative posts. May their calling to service continue in their lives in many positive ways. And finally, Lord, give us all the creative vision to see a world which grown weary with fighting, which has grown weary with fighting. Move us on. Move us on to affirming the life of every human being and so move us beyond war. Hear our prayer, O Prince of, Prince of Peace. Hear our prayer. Amen. O God, our source, our Savior, our destination, grant us the will, the wisdom, and the inner peace to rise each day to face our fears, to cry injustice, and keep our souls awake and alert for the unknown day and hour of our new joy-filled life in you. We ask this through Jesus, our coming Christ, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate, who together with you reign as one God in heaven, on earth, and beyond all time and space. Amen. Please be seated. Are there any in our congregation who desire um, prayers for healing this morning? I know we all do in some ways, <laughs> but any specific healing prayers? 
Did you do? A few weeks ago, you're all aware that we lost our good friend Bud Hescock, and um, Jody has been in contact with, with his daughter Kristen, and she asked for prayers for Bud's soul. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for all the gifts you have given us in this life. We thank you for the gift of friends and family, for the gift of friendship, for the gift of life and love. Today we remember especially our, our good friend Bud. We pray for his soul. We lift his soul up to you, Lord, that you will accept him. We pray for his family, for his daughters and son. We hold them in our hearts and in our prayers. We reach out our loving arms as we know that you do, Lord, to console them in their grief. We thank you for the gift of life, and most of all, we thank you, God, for the gift of of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and it is in his name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. We um, have a couple of announcements to make this morning. UTO is coming up. I hope that um, the UTO Sunday is coming up in a couple of weeks. I believe it's the 22nd. I hope you all have uh, been putting your coins in the little blue boxes or at least in in some safe place to bring for UTO Sunday, the 22nd. Um, we'll, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna make any kind of pronouncements about, about that. I'm gonna let Hope do that on the 22nd. And um, we also have the, the care can, Charles's care can over here that it goes to those people who are exiting incarceration who have nothing essentially and are in um, what's the name of the facility? Thank you, Charles. Good. Yes, Eric?
That is one of the things that I uh, appreciate most about this parish, about the people in this church, is their sense of giving uh, never, never seems to end. It's, it's endless. And uh, it's not just me that appreciates it, but it sure is the people who receive on the receiving end of this who appreciate it a whole lot more than anything else. Um, speaking of giving, the... Um, you should have received your pledge card with my letter that accompanying and uh, if please get those in just as soon as possible the vestry is going to meet soon to to pass a budget for the next year they meet the first weekend in uh, December so we want to get as as many pledge cards as we can in if you haven't brought it in uh, and put it in the plate in the back then then please mail it uh, to get it to the church office as soon as possible. Any other announcements we need to make this morning? Yes, Daddy. Um, ladies of the altar field, I'm a little late in updating our budget. I haven't got an email. Um, the Sunday school teacher is going to be can leave it in the parish hall for people to look at, yeah. Thanks, Jody. Appreciate your, appreciate your work on that. Any others? May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving.
Thanksgiving continues with Eucharistic prayer A. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you have made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind. May the blessing of God, the God who made us, the God who loves us, the God who travels with us, be with you all today and forever. Amen. So we stand and sing hymn number 690, Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah. go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And now the service begins.